Hi, this is Jill Roberts from the show Psychic Today, and I want to talk about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Number one, it's free. Number two, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Number three, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so many other different apps and platforms. You can make money from your podcast, and this is a biggie, with no minimum listening ship. With so many other podcast creators out there that I've tried, I would only use Anchor. I mean, there's, there's no fee. It's completely free, and everything is at your fingertips. It's everything you need to make in a podcast in one place. So now download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Again, that's anchor, A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M or download the Anchor app. And I can't wait to hear your podcast. Welcome to Psychic Today. I'm your host, Jill Roberts, and it is October, and we all know what that means. Besides all the crazy things that are going on in our lives with the pandemic and voting and the election, um, there are our religious beliefs, there are our spiritual beliefs, and so I'd like to talk about what's going on this month and next month with Samhain. Now, Samhain is, at this time, the veil is very thin between this world and the next. So it is a great time for you to contact your ancestors, your lost loved ones. Um, I believe I did a Samhain episode last year, if I'm not mistaken, and if I didn't, I should have. it all ties into mediumship. It ties into intuition. It ties into shamanism. It ties into so many different belief systems, um, especially different paganism. Um, they are so many different sects of paganism. And Samhain just happens to be Um, the end of the summer, the beginning of the winter. And it's during this time, really, from the beginning of October till the end of November, that the veil between the living and the dead are very, uh, is very thin. And you have also the Spanish Dia de los Muertos, which is Day of the Dead, where they worship their ancestors. Um, You have All Hallows' Eve, You have Halloween. Um, So it's a very fun time of year. Um, A lot of, I've seen a lot of newscasters call it, ooh, October, it's spooky. Yeah, well, it can be, but not necessarily. It can be a wonderful time. You know, many modern pagans celebrate Samhain, either on the full moon closest to October 31st or on the date itself. While Celtic in origin, pagans may celebrate in a way culturally appropriate to their tradition. At Samhain season, it is appropriate to invoke the Morrigan and some other gods and goddesses from many different pan- uh, and deities from many different pantheons. For those who practice quieter home-based traditions, this is often a time of some suppers, quiet divination, and family reflection. The list of traditions mentioned here is far from exhaustive. Many pagans may also observe feasts dedicated to specific um, deities through the month of November in addition to or in place of Samhain. So for Wiccans, they consider Samhain the end of the old year and the beginning of the new. At this point in the Sabbath cycle, 
the goddess has descended from the earth to the land of the dead, where she will see and mate with her beloved, the dying god. Her opening the door to the world of the dead is believed to be why the veil thins, and there are rituals practiced to honor her descent and honor the dead, especially those died in the year prior. Celtic Wiccans followed the Wiccan read, and the god goddess saw off the duotheism, but also believe in and work with the Celtic pantheon. Celtic Wiccans celebrate Samhain with common Wiccan rituals, including ancestor altars, dumb suppers, and divination. They also invoke Celtic gods and goddesses of death who directly associate with Samhain, such as the Morrigan. And that's the Morrigan is part of the Celtic uh, pantheon. Now, many pagan, you know, pagans are polytheistic, which means they believe in many deities, not just like Christians and or the, the three traditional religions but it's important to observe and respect other people's religions even if you don't agree with it i know that the united states is made up majority of christianity however at this time you can be spiritual if you're another religion and still do some rites and rituals that are not necessarily Christian or Jewish or Muslim. So there's something called Celtic Reconstruction. And the Reconstructionists are pagans who are trying to rebuild the ancient Celtic paganism as exactly as possible. Um, so they try to make their observations as close to the first frost as possible. Often the Morgan is venerated at this time. In Irish myth, Samhain marks the day that she and the Tuatha Dé Danann, god Dagda, made it at the river Unis. In the myth, the Morrigan represents the forces of death and, and the moon, while the Dagda represents the sun and life. In addition to honoring this lore, Celtic reconstructionists may smudge their homes with juniper, establish an altar to honor the dead, and prepare a feast with the first food set on the plate at a reserved seat at the table or the altar for the dead. At this dinner, people share memories of their departed loved ones and make toasts. After the meal, there is a divination and storytelling. It's a lovely tradition. It really is, even if you're not pagan and you're not a Celtic reconstructionist, so to speak. It is a time of remembering your loved ones who've passed away, whether it's this, this past year due to especially COVID or just passed away due to disease or natural causes or some other, you know, horrible means by somebody taking their life. Um, we want to pay homage to them. We want to remember them and doing this is, intention really it's what christians call prayer it's doing something with the intention and the intention of setting a place at the dinner table and a seat for your loved one who's passed away and remembering them and telling stories about them it's I don't want to go into druidry, traditional witchcraft, eclectic witchcraft. Um, I mean, I think Wiccan and uh, the Celtic Reconstructionists really get it best as far as the things we can do to, um, to, to remember and connect with our loved ones. So this holiday season, and I mean Samhain, not Christmas yet, or Thanksgiving, if you're in the US, you know, you can, there's certain things you can do to connect with your loved ones. I know I've mentioned these in my mediumship um, episodes, but what you can do is meditate. Meditated, meditation is very important. It helps quiet your thoughts. It helps 
open your mind, expand your mind to who is ever around you. You can call on someone in your mind or out loud. You can channel. You can do a shamanic journey. There are so many things you can do. And I do this while I'm meditating. Now, everybody meditates differently. There's no one right way to meditate. Um, just so you know, you got to do what's comfortable for you. Uh, when I meditate, I usually go into trance. Um, so I get to the point where my mind is quieted and then either a client's loved one or my loved one comes through me. And there have been times where I've spoken in languages that I don't speak. So I, I record my meditations because I'll just, instead of like when you do dream work where they tell you to have a pad and pencil next to your bed, you know, if you take yourself out of a lucid dream or take yourself out of an astral traveling session or timeline jumping to write something down so you don't forget it, it, you lose stuff and you're going to lose the majority of an experience because you're stopping it. So what I usually do is, you know, you can get free apps, you know, audio recording apps to put, I put it on my watch, my Apple, um, my Apple watch. And I just speak out loud what I'm hearing, what I'm feeling because of my, my clear senses. We all have them. I will, whatever I see, feel, hear, all of my senses and speak it out loud. And then if the person comes through me and is starting to say stuff, then it makes it easier for me to either play it back for someone or play it back for myself. You know, I transcribe it before I have my sessions with my clients. And um, unlike other mediums, I... I do evidential mediumship, which is getting the person's name, not just a letter, uh, what they look like, what they did for a living, what they were wearing, who they are in relation to my clients. I want no information beforehand. And this is a great time to either practice channeling during your meditation, which is every day. At the same time, if you can, if you're, if now that, you know, we're all kind of working from home and staying at home, um, if you have the space for quiet to every day channel, you're not going to get something every day, you know, it's just what it is. It could be something on your mind, something going on. It, don't get discouraged. If you channel every day, take a half hour to yourself, lay down. I use crystals with everything I do now. I believe in crystal beings. I believe that there is an essence inside each stone besides the type of stone, which goes into alchemy. And I'm going to be doing a lot of episodes on the alchemy of stones. And um, so they help me a lot with what I do. And we all have our go-to stones. You know, no matter how many stones, and I try to expose you guys all to different stones. That's why there's so many different episodes on different stones. It's because, you know, if you're attracted to it, then there's a reason for it. Then get that stone, whether it's in person or online or, you know, there is a reason for you being interested. Your intuition is telling you you know what, this is something that is going to help me. And it will help you channel. And it will help you connect with your loved ones. And I, you know, I do courses that teach you how to do these things. You can go to my websites, um, Psychic Medium NYC for New York City, nyc.com. Um, you can get in touch with me there. You can get in touch with me on the website for this show, Psychic Today with JillRoberts.com. I try to make it as easy as possible. You can leave me a message here wherever you're listening to this, whether it's your desktop or an app. There is, if you look in the show notes or on YouTube, 
Um, on YouTube, this show is um, under um, my name, but it's through Spreaker under a, a Crystalline Exploration. And you can you can type in Crystalline Exploration and uh, find it. It's this episode, but I everything else is from Anchor is uh, you know through Apple, through Google, through um, you know uh, eleven different app platforms besides being on here. So wherever you're listening to this, go into the show notes. You'll see. You know you can leave a message for me. Leave a message for me there and say, hey, I want to learn how to do this. And leave me your number and I'll get back to you. Now, I am having another surgery tomorrow, which is why I'm doing the Samhain episode so early because I don't know how I'm going to be feeling. So if you've left me contact information through my website, um, you're better off just straightforward emailing me at info at psychicmediumnyc.com it's just easier because then it's in my email and you can tell me who you are and what you're looking for whether it is um you know a mediumship reading or a tarot reading or crystal grid or a crystal prescription for a specific physical ailment or mental ailment or emotional ailment I do it all. <laughs> so um, once hopefully this last surgery, I'm hoping it's the last surgery is over. Um, I will be back in action. But just in case <laughs> I have to recuperate a wee bit longer than through Monday. Um, just, you know, know that I'm doing this now because it's an important time of year, especially if you're grieving. I also do grieving and mediumship. It's a package. It's very beneficial um, because it helps connect you to your loved one. And, you know, when we lose somebody, it is difficult, no matter how much time has gone by, but especially when we first lose them. And as of today, the United States has lost over 200 and 11,000 people due to COVID-19. And that's 211,000 families that are suffering. Not to mention the people that are infected with COVID and in the hospital and their loved ones cannot see, you know, go and visit. I know myself going for these surgeries, how serious they take it at the hospital. You know, you can't, it, it's very hard to get in. They're uh, here in New York City, they're not really letting visitors in to see people for any reason, even if you're COVID negative. So it's, you know, it's really, they're taking ex, ex, exponential precautions here. And in Manhattan, they are keeping it down, you know, the infection rate down to, you know, Point seven, which is amazing from where we were at in March, April, and then towards the end, middle end of May got better here. And it is okay here, but you know, flu season is coming and it's going to ramp up infection and we have to take care of one another, regardless of what party you belong to, wear a mask, socially distance, and, you know, get outside, go for a walk. I wish I could. I live in a, a, an apartment with brick walls outside of every window. I am ill, so I can't really get out too often. And it really stinks because, you know, it, it's, I don't have a backyard. I don't have a house. Yet, you know, people would give their you know, left arm or right arm, whatever you call it, to <laughs> to have an apartment on the Upper East Side. And I understand that, but, you know, growing up here, it's a little different. You want, you want the space. You want the fresh air. 
You want to be able to just walk outside your door and, you know, have that as opposed to, you know, having to actually go somewhere that takes 15, 20 minutes of a walk just to have some sort of, you know, type of nature, whether it's a park, especially Central Park. Um, and it's gotten very dangerous. There's a lot of things going on in New York City where, um, you know, people are, ha are have had it. It's been a long ride and we still have time to go. So, you know, I, I felt bad that the president got COVID-19, but, you know, this whole don't let it rule your life. You know, I know people who have had it and uh, it's a little bit of a miraculous recovery, not to mention he is getting the type of care that we would not get. And people have to remember this. He is on two experimental drugs. He is on steroids and yeah, he's feeling great. He's on steroids. <laughs> Um, you know, it's giving him energy. The other, you know, are boosting his immune system. I mean, he is very lucky that he's getting the type of care that he is. And I, I don't want to get political on this show, but all I'm saying is if you go outside, wear a mask, even if you're young, or even if you don't believe that it's transmittable via the air, do it because you're protecting somebody else's family member. Remember that. It's not just about you. It's about somebody else and their loved ones, you know, and spreading it. So we want to keep it contained and we want to get the vaccination and, you know, we want to get it out as, as soon as it's safe. So for everybody, please keep yourself safe and vote as you've heard in my sponsored segment for democracy works how to dot vote for whatever party you are do it vote i voted already i voted as soon as my absentee ballot came in because i did not know how i was going to be feeling i did not know how long the polling was going to be on November 3rd. I am not an undecided voter. So for me, it was easy. Um, and in my state, they made it easy. So I'm grateful for that. Um, I don't know in New York if they're going to be using schools for voting polls. So I don't, you know, everything is kind of just up in the air, but don't let the miscommunication and the chaos confuse you and decide not to have your voice heard. Whether you're for Trump or against Trump, it doesn't make a difference. Vote, get your voice heard. Lots of people have fought and died for this privilege to vote. So, you know, if you're African American or a woman, this you know, especially, you know, we just got our voting rights not too long ago. So let's all just take the time, figure out who we want as president and go and do that. Because regardless if you're for or against this current administration, him saying he's not going to leave regardless of the turnout. That's not how our democracy works. Our democracy works through our voice and our voices through our vote. So please get out and vote. And when I come back, I'm gonna talk about this really cool new stone that came out within the last five years. It's really crazy and amazing. And I can't wait to tell you about it. So hold on, I'll be right back. Hi, this is Jill from Psychic Today, and I want to talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart, which is democracy works and voting. Voting isn't just going to the polls on election day anymore. 
options like early voting, mail-in voting, and ballot drop boxes are available to more and more voters and are growing in popularity. How to Vote, a tool created by Democracy Works, breaks down the options your state offers for casting a ballot, empowering you and us, the people, to decide when and where to vote. It's so vitally important in this election. You know, democracy works best when we all vote, but there's so much misinformation out there and confusion about the election procedures that have resulted in low voter turnout. How to Vote, a tool created by Democracy Works, takes the whole guesswork out of the voting process. It's an easy to use, you know, tool that helps folks from all over the country overcome many of the process barriers to voting. Democracy Works is committed to helping you vote no matter what. Their tool, How to Vote, does just that. Some examples of actions voters can take using the How to Vote voter tool is signing up for election reminders, seeing what's on the ballot, getting step-by-step -step assistance requesting your mail ballot, exploring your options for returning your voted mail ballot, check your voter registration status, find your polling site, and making sure you have the appropriate ID to vote. Decide when and where you'll vote this year at howto.vote. Again, that's howto.vote. And please, whatever your convictions are, we need democracy in this country. So thinking that your vote doesn't matter or that it's too much trouble, it is something that so many people have fought long and hard to do. So please don't take it for granted. Please check out your state's voting qualifications and where and when, but the best way to do it is through how to vote. How to vote is an amazing tool. So again, how to dot vote is a place that can help all of us turn out the correct results on election day. Hi, welcome back. I'm your host, Jill Roberts, and this is Psychic Today. So I have a really amazing transcendent stone to talk about today and it's called euphorolite so what is euphorolite euphorolite is a stone that was recently found in the black hills of south dakota an area that is considered the sacred center of the world to the shane shane and lakota native american tribes billions of years ago a massive meteor struck earth somewhere around the gulf of mexico and embedded itself deep in the, into the crust. As the earth cooled, the meteor cracked, releasing various minerals and metals from our solar system and others into the earth's magma. The magma carried these minerals to what is now the top of North America, pushing itself up from below to where euphorolite was eventually discovered. Now, it's a new high vibrational stone that was, of course, like I said, recently discovered by a man who mines it, cuts it, and he's trademarked it. This new remarkable stone hosts a rich mineral concentration. The stone has begun to be studied. Thus far, the range of minerals discovered is extraordinary. Vibrational studies conducted by Dr. Robert J. Gilbert of the Vesica Institute for Holistic Studies determined that select stones from euphorolite to be rare adaptogenic stones, meaning they have a very high centering vibration. When particular stones are brought together, they can create powerful energy currents through the human energy fields or where they are placed. Euphorolite has been observed creating high levels of negative ions. VRAD, which is the Better Earth Research and Development, concluded in 2015 that euphorolite creates a higher consistency of negative ions than normal healing crystals. The combination of elements seems to elevate the negative ion activity. Due to the abundance of different elements, both known and unknown, there are some 
elemental combination effects we are aware of and some that we're not. Euphora light allows for lucid communication with one's true higher self. It's an excellent stone for communication, vision, intellect, enlightenment, and well-being. Euphora light is a specimen that includes many different crystals and minerals. Upon handling the specimen, many feel the, po the potent vibration that will send empowering waves of euphoria and revitalization throughout the human body. And a lot like when people feel Moldavite for the first time, this really knocks Moldavite on its ass. Because as you know, Moldavite, I didn't feel those those euphoric and, and spacey feelings of Moldavite. I have many pieces and, um, and I have big pieces and I have them from a miner in the Czech Republic. Um, so this, this, now Euphorlite is a type of stone. There are many different types of Euphorlite. Um, but when you hold two different Euphorlites together, one in one hand and one the other, you start to physically feel the vibration in your body. And it does the same thing kind of that Organite does where, you know, it gets rid of the negative EMF pollution around you. And they're really great stones to have. And there's a bunch of different ones that have different minerals and stones and, and metals in them. So, for example, when you hold a red dragon, and I find red dragon in my left hand, and a snowball in my right hand, it is amazing for channeling, it's amazing for meditation, <laughs> it's amazing, you can, you can feel your whole body vibrating, you can feel being uplifted, a lot of them have lipidolite in it, purple lipidolite, and lithium, and it will help calm you as well. So it's exciting as this is happening to you, no matter, and it happens every time I hold the stones. So it's not like it's just the first time and you get used to it. This is something that happens every time you hold them. So I usually lay down, I hold the red dragon in my left hand, a snowball in my right hand, and I'll explain to you what those are in a minute. And I meditate with them and it's very easy to, for me to have my clear abilities be activated, my chakras be cleansed and feel excitement, well-being and connect with the other side and connect with my loved ones in spirit. So it's an excellent stone for, for the topic of this episode. Um, so getting back to the scientific part of it. Um, so it's explained by the effects of negative ions. So you have scientists who have explored this stone to see what's, you know, and the effect, what's going on with it and how it has unique effects on the human biofield. Observation using or interpretation technology indicate an impressive impact that euphoria light based products can achieve. Further investigation may shed light on new properties from the new unresearched combinations that these crystals have on the human body. So, um, you know, it is it is something that is, they're, they're not really hard to find, but they're very rare. So I got mine through um, a couple of sources on Etsy. Some of them can be very expensive. Um Again, I have Cam, who I get all my Lemurians from, um, and my um, my uh, Phantom Purple Lithium from, uh, and she gets uh, these stones. And the miner, there's like one guy who does all this. The miner is the one who kind of doles them out. So if you go on Etsy and you type in Euphora Light, or you can go to BRAD, um, and get from there, but they're very expensive there, very, very expensive. But what the mine um, is remarkable for is that the owner in the Black Hills of South Dakota 
there is, there's ancient mineral deposits in this area that have been dated as up to 2.8 billion years old. So it's a combination of all these different types of stones that and, and minerals and metals that are just, it's extraordinary. And it's, I've been meaning to do a, um, a whole episode on this, but I'll do it real quick. Um, there are different, so yes, if you use certain stones together, they create a powerful current through the human you know, energy field and the environment where they're placed. So like I told you before, Red Dragon and Snowball, for me, seem to have a really um, great experience. And a lot of a lot of people who use Euphorolite say that as well. In Red Dragon, there is feldspar, quartz, black tourmaline, biotite, silver, mica. Okay. In <laughs> Snowball, excuse me, there's blue tourmaline, feldspar, quartz, mica, and albite. Um, there are many, many different types of euphorolite. So again, I mentioned red dragon. There's golden, there's luna, there's lavender sky, there's Gaia, midnight, harmony, divine, storm, ice, tranquil, which was formerly love, spirit, which was formerly ugly, for whatever reason, enchanted, electric, transformation, exotic, ascension, amour, earth, snowball, bliss, illumination. And they all have different, you know, different minerals and, and stones in them. So it's, it's kind of just like a combination and everyone is unique. It's not the kind of thing where it's, you know, you're looking for amethyst and you get amethyst. It's that stone or even you get, you know, merlinite or, you know, whatever. It, it's different every stone is different. So you want to get a good source. Um, I suggest Terra Solis on Etsy, which is a uh, cam store. And also the Healing Village KTE on Etsy. Um, they're both, both um, shops have amazing um, amounts of your four light different your four lights and i also got some raw ones from someone else but because you know how i feel about raw stones but i tend to like believe it or not the tumbled ones for for this particular uh type of of stone so that's your four light and you know in the same, you need to know that positive and negative ions affect us. So during this time when, you know, we're quarantining or we're stuck inside because of what's going on with the earth at this point, you have to know that this can help as well. The human body's magnetic field is naturally made up of positive and negative ions. Computers, mobile phones, and other electrical equipment overexpose us to positive ions, which are also known as free radicals, which can affect our natural balance and cause us to feel drained, lethargic, anxious, and, you know, even depressed. These positive ions steal electrons from healthy cells to neutralize their own charge, leading to cellular damage. And the negative ions help to balance and prevent damage from positive ions. So, you know, it's important. The stone is, is so wonderful for so many reasons, but also for the fact that, you know, it's, it will help our health. So, you know, what do we have really to lose? Because I, I hate saying that because I sound like Trump, <laughs> but um, it's, it's something that is, you know, that can help. And why not use everything that we can when it comes to this? You know, when activating 
you know, negative ions around us, our goal is for them to ground us and not surrounding objects. So, you know, negative ions, again, help balance, prevent damage from positive ones. When they reach our bloodstream, they are believed to produce biochemical reactions that increase levels of serotonin, which help to alleviate depression and stress and boost energy. And it's natural serotonin. It is not through a pill. Salt lamps are, are gaining popularity due to their ability to disperse negative ions into the air around them. However, their negative ion output is low and the heat and electricity from the light can ground the negative ions and it's believed to be releasing, resulting in little to no effects on the surrounding environment. When using an ion meter on a salt lamp, you will rarely see a reading above 350. In fact, it's commonly much lower. Before light, on the other hand, can produce readings from the mid hundreds to several thousand. So it does affect around us, everything around us. What can euphora light do for us? Because the negative ion movement in euphora light is so present, holding a piece of euphora light or a combination of two different types of euphora light, like I do, is instantly grounding. It's powerful enough to journey us from a peaceful state of mind up to a stage of relaxation one step before the dream state, eliciting a sense of euphoria, which is thus why it's called euphoria light. When activating the negative ions around us, our goal is for them to ground us and not sur the surrounding objects. When working with euphoria light, it is recommended to, un to plug any surrounding electrical outlets to prevent them from unintentionally grounding to the outlets. These are things that we don't think about. You know, what, where we are draining the positive things we're trying to put into our bodies, like the negative ions. We don't want them to ground to other objects or electrical outlets. Um, Euphoria light will naturally lose their charge over time as they ground to other objects in our absence. So simply cleansing the stone and running underwater will allow it to regain its charge. This is a stone that you can run underwater. I never um, say for people to do the water cleansing method with, with other stones because there's so many of them that will dissolve and you don't want that to happen. Um, but with euphoria light, you can do it and they will dissolve even if they are tumbled, not just raw, you know, so, um, not euphoria light, but other stones. That's why I use the smoke method and I sage my stones, but for this, you just run it underwater, use a little sage and it, you know, it, they get their power back. So, um, they say here, um, when you used to, so when used together in combinations of different types of euphoria light can help to increase negative ion output. Some powerful combinations are ice, which was high voltage, um, but it's called ice now, paired with high lithium lipidolite, and also blue snowball paired with red dragon. Now, I just happened to, I didn't even know this because I didn't, um, I researched it while um, after I had purchased Red Dragon and Snowball. And um, it just so happened that this is a powerful combination. And there's there's element analysis of for each one on color and matrix. And it's just amazing. And every day there are new ones coming out. And, you know, I have wands made out of them. I have, um, you know, you can also buy spheres. There's just so much you can, you know, so many types of before light towers. So definitely check it out. It's something that's new, that's cool. And that I highly suggest that you take a look at because they are powerful, very, very powerful. So I hope you've enjoyed you for light learning about that and i will be back hopefully soon in the meantime you can get a hold of me at psychic today with jill roberts.com again that's psychic 2 j with jill roberts.com and um 
from there you can get to my website you can email me at info at psychicmediumnyc.com you can leave me a message right here right now as you're listening and ask me anything any question it doesn't even have to refer to Samhain or Euphorolite or any anything that I've talked about today so don't forget you can always ask me anything and I will get back to you if I don't have the answer I will research it and get back to you so I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week, rest of your month, and I will be talking to you soon.